Can you build a 3D world with no previous experience? You might be shocked to find out that yes, you can. I've never done anything in 3D. Can I build a 3D world? Let's find out. Hi all, Tech Terry down here. Today I want to talk about building 3D scenes using a tool called Spline. I first came across Spline in a tweet. I visited their website and looking at the website you could see this really cool animation right here on the front of their website. If you hold the click button down, you can drag it around, just orbit around. And it's a really cool view here. It's built right in the web browser. And I wanted to actually try to build a 3D world for Tech Teardown. It has a little bit of a view like Figma. If you're familiar with that, you have this panel over on the right side, all of your different layers on the left, your selection of tools in a toolbar up here at the top. I was already pretty comfortable with this sort of layout. What I wanted to do then is just get used to the different options that I had. I immediately started dropping in some different objects. Here I dropped in a cube. If you hold down the option key and click, you can move around in 3D space. I started playing around with the different options there just to see how it actually looked in that space. After using the world's greatest tool in YouTube, I found out enough that I could start to manipulate this shape. Once you're using the shape, you can do some different things. You can increase the base subdivision modifiers. This is essentially putting lines onto an object that you're able to alter those different points. Once I got familiar with the different points here, building all those different lines for my shape, I started using a sculpting tool to start to drag, pull, and tweak this to look something a little bit closer to an organic shape. I'm trying to get rid of all of those hard edges. You can do this a lot of different ways, but I found the sculpting tool to be a really nice way to do so. Once you have your object, you can do things like increasing the base subdivision, which really just means you're adding in more mesh, more points that you can manipulate. And then going back in with that tool makes it a lot softer. Then you can start to do some really creative things because you're really able to target these pockets a lot more. So I was trying to give the asteroid these really deep craters. Playing around with it here, you can see you're really able to push and pull this. Sh and you can see here though, you still have the pixelation. I wanted to make sure that was a little bit more clear. I just increased the base subdivision again and it started to smooth that object out even more. Now what really starts to get fun is you are able to tweak all of the different lighting. You can do things like changing this to be more physical, shiny, a sort of tune, cartoon look. There's lots of videos that explain what these different features do, but you can start to change even the color. If I wanted to make it this purple glow, I could do here. I've got it as a light purple asteroid that's floating through space. And it's starting to look pretty nice. I like the way that, that looks. Now there's a lot of other things you can do. There's a directional light, this lighting, you can move this around. You can see it casting those shadows in different ways. You can add other objects. You could add spheres. Maybe you could draw a spaceship of some type by using this tool. I like the way that's starting to look. After a couple hours, you can see here, I built this pretty basic scene, but I was happy with it. For Tech Teardown, you can see he's there on the asteroid. Now one of the reasons I wanted to use Spline is that it's interactive. They have a feature called Game Controls where you can actually control the character in a scene. There are some examples here. A new feature they launched called Game Controls where you can make the scenes interactive. I wanted to do that for Tech Teardown. My next step was trying to figure out how to set up Game Controls. Once I got back into my scene, I clicked on the group, went to events, and added an event called game controls. I didn't tweak any of the settings, hit play, use some keys, and you can see here I was able to animate him immediately. Now this was really cool. I think this is fast. I was actually shocked that it just worked straight out of the box. We were able to move him around, around the scene, have him jump around and then you could embed this onto a website. If I ever have a website, I'll probably put this type of scene where you can play around with tech 
and have him jump around this little asteroid and explore the different things here. I thought this was cool. I started experimenting with other scenes. Here's one that's a little bit smaller that might work better on a website. Some different little crystals and I was playing around with the different reflection and lighting. You can see the crystals reflect that lighting as he walks around in the shadows. I thought this was just a really neat way. You can actually drag this one with your mouse to go around the world. Uh, I thought this was such a cool way to just build these out. Again, I have no 3D uh, experience. I've never used a tool like Blender or anything. I've basically only used Figma, Photoshop, and Illustrator. To be able to come in here and quickly build these out was pretty amazing. If you go to Twitter, you can see some different things that people are building with Spline, some really cool interactions that you can put. Of course, if you hover over things or move your mouse, it makes it really easy to animate those features in 3D. The Spline account on Twitter has all kinds of examples and real life use cases where people are building all types of cool 3D blobs with different colors that you can interact with, little mock-ups of scenes that they've added on websites, and game controls obviously where they're playing around. That's it for me in this brief intro to the Spline app. I would really encourage you to try to build out a 3D scene. It's a lot easier than you would expect. I think Spline is the perfect introduction to what this looks like. If you use Figma, or even if you haven't used Figma, start playing around with the tool. I think you'll find it really easy to use and a lot less intimidating than a tool like Blender or some of the other tools that are really advanced for animation. For me, this was the perfect intro for building out a little 3D world here. I can't wait to put something like this onto my website and play around with it a little bit more. That's it for me. As always, thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, please hit subscribe and until next time.